Okay, happy Vlogmas Day 13. So this is the last of my pre-filmed Vlogmas videos for this weekend for you and we're looking at Christmas pudding today. This is something else that would typically be made in advance traditionally. Stir Up Sunday is um, in November, uh, which is when you traditionally make your Christmas pudding. But you can make Christmas pudding even further in advance. Uh, my stepmother made t two one year and saved one for the following year. I've not done that myself yet, but uh, mostly, well, two reasons. One, we don't have space to store stuff, really. We've got a tiny kitchen, we don't have a pantry. Um, but mostly because we'd eat it. It wouldn't last the year. So, Christmas pudding, let's get to it. Okay, so Christmas pudding time. Traditionally, this would be made on the last Sunday before Advent, which is usually kind of the weekend before American Thanksgiving. But as per form, I wasn't organised enough to do that and I only put my fruit in soak that Sunday and I soaked my fruit for a week for my Christmas pudding. So uh, here we are. It's actually the uh, last weekend in November today. It's uh, Sunday the 28th. Um, so a little bit of a flashback for you to put this together. So Christmas pudding is really simple. I've uh, buttered a three pint pudding basin and its lid. It's important that you butter it well and that you also butter the lid um, because you don't want your pudding sticking uh, in your, your pudding basin. So um, now we just need to put everything together. So I've got my nice big bowl. We're going to start by mixing together 100 grams of plain flour, 125 grams of breadcrumbs, 150 grams of suet, and um, a few other bits and bobs, and then we'll have the fruit. So let's start with the flour. So there's my 100 grams of flour, 150 grams of suet, that's vegetable suet that I'm using. Uh, suet originally would have been a beef product, I believe, certainly animal fat, um, but you can get vegetable suet these days, which is just as good. Um, next, I'm putting in 125 grams of breadcrumbs, uh, 150 grams of dark muscovado sugar. Um, I don't know how that compares to molasses in the States. I don't know if you can get muscovado sugar out there. Uh, we can't really get uh, molasses in this country, so... Uh, you want a dark brown sugar and then we're also going to add in a grated large grated brown meat apple um, I've actually grated two small ones because I didn't, couldn't get hold of large ones and I've added in uh, one lemon zest I have put some lemon juice on the apple as well just to minimize browning but to be honest everything's going to get brown anyway when it's in the pudding so one large brown meat apple or two small ones are grated and the zest of a lemon. So that's all going to get a bit of a stir around. I'm going to add some spices in a minute. And some honey and some eggs. Just going to break some of that sugar up a bit. Uh, muscovado sugar is quite a moist sugar. Um, by that I mean it like clumps together. Uh, it's soft sugar, it's not like granulated sugar or demerara sugar that just sort of sits apart in its container uh, but you know obviously once you're cooking your uh, pudding it's all going to dissolve um, you'll see there's a few lumps of apple in here I swear I had a few bits that I couldn't quite get through the grater so I've just chopped them up and put them in um, again they're going to cook down as the pudding cooks so that's a bit of an initial mix through. Next thing I'm going to add is the spices. So we're using cinnamon and cloves. So we're going to use a quarter teaspoon of cloves. I don't have a quarter teaspoon measure. So I'm going to put in two eighths. For some reason, when I got my measuring spoons, they had two eighths and no quarter. But, uh, that's fine, basic maths, we can, we can cope with that. I'm also going to put in a teaspoon of cinnamon. My cinnamon is getting quite low in this jar. I do have uh, more, but uh, just gonna, actually, I'm going to use my half teaspoon measure for that, just because it'll fit in a little bit better. Uh, and with it being low as well, it's going to be a little bit easier. So, 
a tiny, tiny bit more so that wasn't quite a full measure. I do have like two more cinnamon jars. Um, we go through a lot of cinnamon in this house, particularly at this time of year. Okay, so one teaspoon of cinnamon and then one teaspoon of baking powder. When I can get the lid off it. So my baking powder has come in this cardboard container, but it has got a plastic sheath inside. Uh, so obviously you don't want your baking powder getting wet. So one teaspoon of that. I'll put that to one side. And I'll give that another mix through before I add the eggs and the honey. I like to mix things in stages just to make sure that everything is as fully distributed as it can be. I've still got a few lumps of sugar in here, but I'm not going to stress about that too much. I take a very relaxed approach to, to baking. Okay, so now we need three eggs. I'm going to just crack them into a smaller bowl so I don't make a mess all over my surfaces. Uh, partly because I've got my tripod for my camera clipped onto the edge of the drawer, so uh, the drawer's slightly open. I don't really want raw egg in my cutlery drawer. I will quite often, because I use plastic bowls and they don't have the sharp edges, I will quite often crack my eggs just by tapping them on the surface. So that's three eggs. Let's look at these eggshells that way. I do try and clean up as I go to a point um, when I'm baking and cooking. So I'll add those eggs in. Try not to add the spoon in. Just going to crack those yolks a little bit and mix those through a bit. Not everything is going to come together fully at this stage, that is okay. It is starting to, to come together. There's going to be more moisture coming in in a minute when we add the fruit as well, so that will help the last little bits come in. So we're going to need to add some honey next. Now, honey and syrup and treacle and things, try to stick to your measures and I actually saw a little trick the other day on a cooking show I can't remember who it was it might have been Nigella uh, somebody of that kind, that ilk anyway a uh, tv chef what they did was they took some oil cooking oil normal cooking oil and they actually wiped the inside of their measure with the oil And I am going to be dipping this spoon into my liquid honey. I'm not too bothered by contamination for oil into honey. It's, uh, well, A, it's not likely to happen because the oil and honey is going to repel each other, which is why you do it. Um, but also I use my honey for cooking, essentially. So it's quite often with oil anyway. So we need two tablespoons of honey into the mix. And the oil should, in theory... If you put a nut muff on, which I may not have done, uh, should actually just let the honey come out of the spoon a little bit more easily than it otherwise would. But yeah, you need. I think you need to be a little bit more liberal with your oil than I've been. I mean, it is coming out easier than it normally would, but not as easily as I'd like. So let's just give it a little bit of help with the spoon. First time I've tried the oil trick, so I'll try it again at another point and see if I can get the uh, quantities right. So let's mix that honey through. So all that I've got left to do is add the fruit that I've been soaking for a week. I'm using a mixture of uh, currants, sultanas, cranberries and chopped dates that have been soaked for uh, a week in sherry. So they now look uh, like this. And it's a total... Well, it's 150 grams of currants, 150 grams of sultanas, that's 300. And then 75 grams each of cranberries and chopped dates, so that's 150. 
so yeah, four, so 450 grams of fruit in 175 mils of sherry. And I'm just going to make sure that all of the fruit and the juices and everything have come out of this tub that they've been soaking in. As we want to make sure that all the sherry goodness goes in. And then we stir all that through. And then we have essentially your uh, Christmas pudding mix. Now you can make this significantly well in advance. In the shops you can buy a 24 month matured Christmas pudding. So yeah, you, you really can. Once they're cooked, once they've had their initial cook, you really can leave them for a, a long period of time. To uh, do their thing and to mature their flavour, to let all those goodness things just sort of percolate through everything. Uh, back in the day, you used to put money in the uh, Christmas pudding. It's not really the done thing anymore. Um, I remember my first year at boarding school, uh, so when I was 11, I managed to get all of the money out of the Christmas pudding on my table, just out of sheer fluke. So at about £2.50, which I spent at the airport on the way home. For those of you that don't know, I went to school on the Isle of Wight, and when I started, I was living in the Highlands, so I had to fly back from Heathrow to Inverness. So I bought a puzzle book to use on the plane. Okay, so that's my mixture all thoroughly mixed together. I'm just going to grab my three-pint pudding basin and uh, spoon it into that. Obviously, want to make sure that I'm squishing it down. So I'll just get the bit in first, and then I'll squish it into the corners. So what you don't want is big air bubbles at the top of your pudding. You want it to be nice and smooth when it comes out. Traditionally, on Christmas Day, when you've got your Christmas pudding cooked, however you're doing it, whether you're doing the final cook in the oven or the microwave or steaming it. It's really more of sort of heating it up rather than actual cooking. Uh, traditionally, you would set it on fire. Uh, so you'd pour over a little bit of brandy or vodka or something like that uh, and light it. Uh, it always works best if, you, if you're using, certainly if you're using brandy, if you warm the brandy a little bit first. Uh, it's probably brandy that we'll use in this house because uh, we don't need vodka. And then you have nice flames coming off your Christmas pudding. And everybody goes, ooh. I've no idea if it makes a difference to the flavour. It possibly does. Yeah, I don't normally have the uh, big chunks of apple in the pudding because I normally have a large apple that I can grate more effectively than the two small ones, they were a bit fiddly. Um, but apple does cook down quite nicely, so I'm not too concerned. And uh, it just might change the texture ever so slightly in where those lumps are, because there'll be a lump of apple rather than the rest of the pudding mix. Okay, so I'm just going to even out the uh, top of the pudding make sure it's all nicely packed in there and I'm going to pop the lid on and uh, get ready to steam it Christmas pudding is a steamed pudding. Um, there are other ways of doing it. I think my mum did hers in the oven. I can't really remember. She used a very different recipe when I was growing up, which included Guinness. And this is a much lighter Christmas pudding than I grew up with. So now that it's in its uh, pudding basin, I'm going to wrap it in foil. Now the reason I wrap it in foil, essentially, is to help... Oh, excuse the rustling. 
Hey, I'll stop rustling for a minute. The reason I wrap it in foil is essentially to help keep the lid on whilst it's steaming because you don't want water going in whilst it's steaming. I have seen people do fancy folds at the top to help steam get out or to help them lift it out of the steamer afterwards. I don't do that, partly because I, I don't find that it needs it. Um, because I've got the lid on, I don't, it, it keeps all the steam in anyway. Um, and the lid for the, my steam actually sits right on top of my pudding basin because my pudding basin is ever so slightly taller than the chambers in my steamer. Um, so yeah, so it, it stays quite compact and taking it out is not an issue because it's not sitting in water. I just take the, the top chamber off my steamer and it's it's out of the steam. Um, so I'm going to now steam that for five hours and then I'll probably change the foil over and leave it to one side until Christmas. Christmas Day it'll get steamed for another three plus hours um, or possibly microwave because we'll have a microwave by then. Obviously don't leave the foil on if you're microwaving it. Um, if I had uh, linen or cheesecloth or something, I could wrap it in that instead of the foil, um, which I could then leave on, and you don't have to worry about that in the microwave. So uh, yeah, so that's that's Christmas pudding. <laughs>